That there is the face of someone who brought Triple Swordmaster into Double Hell Cannon, and not only Triple Swordmaster, but Triple Rank 9 Swordmaster, so you already know who it is. Rider of Rohan coming in with a wild high elf build into the Warriors of Chaos. Alariel leading the way with the said Rank 9 Triple Sword Masters. A couple archers, rangers leading the way as well with some spearmen, two dragon princes, so a pretty tall, small high elf build. 700 total troop count, which actually isn't that small for a high elf build, all things said and done. We've got Sigvald here with the Mirror Guard, the Marauders, uh, with two uh, Warriors with Halberds protecting the Hell Cannons. One of the Hell Cannons, of course, the ROR Soul of Damnation, some Horsemen, some uh, Doggos as well, kind of scattered about the back line. So we're gonna get things going here. Dragon Princes traversing the uh, Warpstone Scar, getting into a good position. The Warriors of Chaos really should come forward and contest with the advantage of the slope, but right now just allowing the High Elves to get into a more even position. Nice charge from these Dragon Princes, although they are sort of charging through their own Rangers not as good as it could be. Certainly the combination with the Rangers uh, anti-infantry there should be just fine. One Swordmaster getting absolutely double pounded by double cannons, and then they turn their attention to the other one, so at least uh, now splitting their fire. Probably, honestly, it's better to try and focus on one Swordmaster with both. But the archers do kind of come around the flank here and come into range to try, try and start shooting the artillery crews there. Nice burning head does roast out huge value on those archers and swordmasters as well. So already things are not looking great. I mean, besides the whole double hell cannon situation. But oh yeah, L'Oreal doing some fancy little attacks there. Showing those marauders what's what. He is pretty solid on foot, honestly, in terms of defensive stats. Not a lot of armor, but very high melee defense. 67 melee defense with decent self-healing and 300 weapon strength. Not the worst caster in the world in combat, honestly. That high defense, certainly, while Martial Prowess is active, does make her very tanky uh, to certain types of threats. But Dragon Prince is definitely taking some work there. Marauder Horsemen, there are semi-AP jabs. Pretty decent against the, the Dragon Princes, even with the physical resistance. But Dragon Princes utilizing their mobility to just come collapse these Marauders, try and even out this infantry fight and the numbers advantage as much as they can. And this is definitely the right call. There's not enough mobility, heavy mobility in, in particular to respond. There's no like Dragon Ogres or anything like that. Chaos Warriors with Halberds are just kind of sitting passively right now, letting the uh, Dragon Princes run all over them. Even if they were to pursue, which they are now doing, uh, it's still not a great prospect for them, all things considered. The Sorcerer having to run for the hills. He does have Lore of Fire, which is not going to benefit him greatly against those Dragon Princes. But a nice Shield of Thorns there does hit these uh, Swordmasters. The base weapon damage doesn't really help that much. Definitely helps the Dragon Princes quite a bit more, but the physical resistance certainly in and of itself will contribute. And oh, these Mirror Guard. Oh, the sad day of the Mirror Guard. <laughs> they will rue this day, no doubt. They came into contact with these Swordmasters who, uh, surprisingly enough, are not racking up the kills as quickly as you might think. But they're starting to get their Fraws Protection, the additional melee defense up to 81 melee defense. So at the very least, they're not taking much damage in this fight, certainly. And the uh, the two rank nines here holding out in the late game with Alariel. I mean, I say late game. It's late game for them. They've taken a lot of damage already from the Hell Cannons. But now that the Hell Cannons are... You know, in one case shut down, this other one's still trying its best to fight. All these horsemen are in here in uh, to protect with all the warriors, with halberds, and the marauders as well, the mirror guard. They're all kind of defending this position, right? Trying to keep this one hell cannon still firing. Take out what's left of the sword masters, but another burning head doesn't really do much. If anything, maybe just catches those marauders too. Uh, not quite fully, but still. Sigwald's definitely a threat in this late game, but uh, the 57-45 of the Swordmasters is good enough. He's got 70-60 on attack and defense, so he's definitely a step up. But with the anti-infantry bonus factored in, of course, that uh, the, the attack of Swordmasters will be even higher. So with Alariel still providing, of course, there's no terror, so immune to psychology doesn't really matter. And I guess magic damage doesn't really matter either in this case, because nothing really has physical resistance here. But... At the very least, leadership buffs and this nice healing sustain, of course. Star of Avalon, there's still 48 models alive for this unit of Swordmasters, so a really good heal on an elite infantry there. Basically, like, with infantry models, it's it's a little bit tricky to try and use, like, big burst heals on infantry because you can end up overhealing a lot of times if the models have died, if, if too many models have died, let's say. Um, there's a replay from years ago that I'm, I'm remembering. I don't, I can't remember the exact date, but I, I seem to recall I accidentally clicked regrowth on a unit of foot squires. But 
The Foot Squires had taken quite a bit of HP damage, but hadn't lost any of their unit models. They still had whatever they have, like 90 or whatever it is, unit models. And so the, the heal actually ended up keeping almost all of those models that were low health alive, right? And so I was able to retain almost the full killing power of the unit through several tough engagements. So it's a little bit tricky. Basically with infantry, I guess my point is the more models are left alive, but HP damage is done, that's a good case for healing infantry. In this case, just any healing you can get on this kind of tattered band of Swordmasters is going to be good in this late game here to try and sustain them through whatever fights come. Right now, with the support of these Spearmen, actually, the Spearmen kind of taking a lot of the hits of the Mirror Guard here, they are able to uh, perform still quite well and blend through what's left of these uh, Chaos Warrior Regiment of Renown here. Sigvald is suddenly going to be isolated, and his splash attacks will do quite a bit. But Alario can come in and do okay. I mean, she can certainly tank his damage. Again, he's got 70 attacks, so he definitely can hit her pretty consistently, even at 67 defense. So she's got to be careful, but uh, in a pinch, she can definitely uh, try and fight him with the support of the Swordmaster, certainly. It's not going to be as bad as other characters might. Of course, his perfect vigor means that in this late game, that 100 arm, 110 armor is real. Whereas, like, for example, the Swordmasters are probably in reality sitting at, like, 65-ish armor. I forget exactly. I think it's a 30% 30, 30 armor debuff, something like that. Uh, maybe more for being exhausted. But uh, Alariel here at 36 speed is actually slower than Sigvald. So she's just going to pop pause protection. Goes up to 91 melee defense. Sigvald is going to try at this point, but he's pretty minimum. Pretty much minimum hit chance. Uh, even still, does manage to get a hit there. I mean, even an 8% chance to hit, you still can get a hit, especially if Alariel turns her back there. But a very clutch star of Averlorn and those Dragon Princes coming in to use their mass to screen Sigvald. There's basically nothing else, right? So Dragon Princes at this point can just surround Sigvald and keep him locked in place. And again, absorb some of the hits. They're going to be really good at tanking Sigvald's damage. I think they it may even be... Let's see, I don't think he one-shots their models. No, I was going to say, I think because of the physical resistance, the way the splash attack gets divvied up, uh, the physical resistance in the melee defense, like, that's if he makes consistent contact with them. He's not going to be maybe two or three-shotting their models, even. <coughs> Excuse me. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty decent stuff. Dragon Prince has definitely managed to carry some value, and the Swordmasters, despite coming in rank 9 facing what I would consider to be a pretty decent counter build, all things considered, does lack terror and maybe some other shock tools, arguably, but still, the two Hell Cannons, I mean, they definitely paid for themselves, shooting up those Swordmasters, but even still, tattered as they were in the late game, the Swordmasters were still able to help carry that. All of the infantry here pretty much gets butchered and doesn't pay for itself on the Warriors of Chaos side. The horsemen do pay for themselves. Uh, probably more horsemen, honestly, would have been better in hindsight. But, yeah, in hindsight's 2020. I would say for sure, though, you want some kind of terror here. So even, like, cutting one halberd, just bringing a feral manticore, uh, give you some cheap terror to try and come in and also shock out some of these units once they get low on HP. And then just cleaning them up, cleaning them up once they do route with the hounds and the horsemen that you already have in the build. But a uh, very fun one. Big thanks to Ryder Rohan for sending that one in. He said, I have a doozy for you. And I'm like, oh yeah, do you now? Okay, triple rank swordmasters. Or sorry, triple rank nine swordmasters check uh, against double hell cannon Sigvald. Yeah, it's got, it check, check, checks a lot of the boxes. Heavy cavalry also performing very well. So checks that box too. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. Warhammer 3 is fast approaching, so if you want to be up to date on all the content there, be sure to keep your eye on this channel for more coming soon. Can't say more, but that's it. See you next time. Bye-bye.